Hi there, this is Sam, recording from a much cooler Orange County than normal. We've had a few days of cloud and rain, which is weird but good, because it reminds me of England. So, super nice. Anyway, let's get started by going over the words from episode 38. Those were abstain. That means to stop yourself or restrain yourself from doing or enjoying something, such as abstaining from eating chocolate, or abstaining from drinking alcohol. Harangue, harangue, that means a lengthy and aggressive speech, could also be a tirade or polemic. It can also mean the verb harangue to lecture at someone in an aggressive or critical manner. Sporadic, sporadic, that means occurring at irregular intervals or in a few places. It can also mean scattered or isolated. And our final word was caustic, caustic, that means able to burn or corrode organic tissue by chemical action. It can also mean to be sarcastic in a scathing or cutting way. Those were our words from last week. Now, let's move swiftly on to our new words. And the first word for episode 39 is empirical. Empirical. That's spelt E-M-P-M-I-R-I-I-R-I-C-A-L. Cal. Empirical. And if something is empirical, it means that it's based on, or concerned with, observation and experience, rather than just a theory. So, if you're carrying out an experiment, and you do your experiment, and you get some data or observations from the experiment, and then you use that data to predict something happening in the future, you are making that prediction in an empirical way. You are using your evidence and data to predict what's going to happen. Some synonyms of empirical are experiential, practical, heuristic, first-hand, and hands-on. So, what empirical means, really, is you have some sort of concrete evidence of how something is going to happen or how something will behave, rather than a pure theory upon which you have no evidence. So, let's think of an example. Before man went into space, and before man had sent any objects to space, he would have had an idea of how things would behave in space. But he wouldn't have any real evidence, say, what would happen when a human being went into space. He had theories, but since no human had ever been to space, they had no idea how the human body would behave, how human bodily functions would behave in space. They just had theories. So that wasn't empirical. However, when they sent human beings to space for the first time, they carried out a lot of experiments. They sent various measuring devices up with those first astronauts. And with those measuring devices, they got data. And then when they went on to predict certain things happening, it was based on this data. So it was empirical. Another example is that of aliens. Many people believe aliens might exist, but they have no empirical evidence. That is, they've never seen a real alien, they have no actual data or other evidence that an alien exists. It's just a theory, so it is not empirical. Our second word is opaque. Opaque. That is spelled O-P-A-Q-U-E. Opaque. Opaque has a couple of meanings, and we're going to co cover the two most commonly used meanings. The first is simply not able to be seen through, 
or not transparent. So if you're in the shower and the window of your shower or the glass door of your shower becomes covered with steam so you can no longer see through it, you could say that window became opaque with steam. You can't see through it. Or anything that is impenetrable to light that is opaque. So walls are generally opaque unless they're made of glass. The secondary meaning of opaque means hard to understand or not clear, which makes sense when you think about the first meaning. A window that is covered in steam is not clear. You can't see through it. So opaque can mean something is hard to understand or not clear. It can also mean obscure. So if you're working on a problem for a test and it's a hard to understand problem, you could say that problem is opaque. Some synonyms of opaque, the first definition, are not transparent, cloudy, filmy, blurred, smeared, smeary, misty, or hazy. Our third word is, I think, a really good word, and it is misanthrope. Misanthrope. It is spelled M-I-S-A-N, misan, T-H-R-O-P-E, thrope, misanthrope. And a misanthrope is a person who dislikes other people and avoids other people. You could say a misanthrope is a hater of humankind. And this is what the word literally means, because it comes from Greek, and anthro, if you see that in a word, usually refers to man or humans. So the mis comes from a Greek word meaning hate or hatred, and the anthro part means man. So it really means a hater of man. If you know the word anthropology, that means the study of man. Anthropo, again, that's coming from the Greek anthropos, meaning man or humans. So, yes, so if you know anthropology, that's going to give you the clue to let you know that the word misanthrope means something to do with humans. Some synonyms of misanthrope are hater, cynic, or maybe hater of mankind. As an example, you can think of a hermit who has become so cynical of human beings and maybe politics. So they've left their town or city where they lived and gone to live in a small shack in the woods to be alone because they don't want to see another person. They don't want to hear another person. They just don't want to see people anymore. They are a misanthrope. Sometimes you might hear people joke about someone being a misanthrope because they're moody or grumpy. It's quite rare that you meet someone who is a true misanthrope, who really doesn't ever want to be near people, because most people are not like that. So be aware that misanthrope can be used in a sort of jokey way. You might call your moody friend a misanthrope, but probably he isn't really in the true meaning of the word, a misanthrope, a hater of humankind, someone who avoids other people all the time. And our final word is orotund. Orotund. That's spelled O-R-O, -O, oro, T-U-N-D, tund, orotund. And usually it's referring to the voice or a phrase, and it means full, round, and imposing. So if you imagine an amazing poet or singer who has an amazing voice, and it's a round voice, an imposing voice, maybe a deep voice, and that voice is nice to listen to because of its roundness and its fullness, that voice can be described as being orotund. Some synonyms are deep, sonorous, strong, powerful, full, rich, resonant, 
loud and booming. The word orotund can also be used to describe a style of doing something. For example, a style of writing or a style of talking. So that meaning means pompous or pretentious. So if you meet someone who's really too confident, they're very pompous, they're full of themselves, they always talk in a pretentious way, you may say that they are orotund. That meaning of orotund is similar to another word we covered in a previous podcast, and that was bombastic, which can mean affected, grandiose, overly ornate or florid. What I love about the word orotund is the word itself sounds like it means orotund. The word has a round sound, and it starts with a big round O, and it repeats itself, orotund, with those two O's there. So, orotund, it's some onomatopoeia there. It sounds like it means full and round. Now let's quickly cover the words from today. Those were empirical. That means based on evidence, observation, and experience, rather than just a theory or logic that's only come from your mind. Opaque. That means not to be able to see through or not transparent. Can also mean if something is hard to understand or obscure. Misanthrope. That is a person who dislikes mankind and avoids other people. And orotund, that means full, round, or imposing. Of a style or writing, it can mean pompous or pretentious. So just realize this podcast is running a bit long, so I'm going to try and do the rest of this episode as quickly as I can. So Let's move on to the test sentences. Listen to each sentence and work out which word I'm referring to. Ross explored the abandoned mansion with Gareth. Inside, it was extremely dark and gloomy. The windows were so dirty that little light penetrated inside. Alfonso, after a hard life, decided he didn't want to see people anymore. He preferred to be alone with his pet dog. He left the city and went to live as a hermit in the woods. Pavarotti, the famous singer, was known for his powerful and rich voice. Logical Jane always tried to make her decisions based on hard evidence and statistics rather than her emotions. So guys, those are our words for today. Sorry about the episode running on a little long. I got away with myself and talked too much, but no big deal. (laughs) Anyway, please write a review if you haven't done already for the iTunes page. Just search Victor Prep on iTunes. Uh, It really helps, and I really want to get the podcast out to as many people as I can do. So, yep, that does help, and please check out the Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Victor Prep Learning. And also send me an email or tweet at me. I'm at Sam Fold on Twitter, and I appreciate any tweets. Or email me at sam.fold at gmail.com. Thank you all so much. I hope you have an amazing week, whether that's at work, school, or whether you're just on vacation. So (laughs) enjoy it, whatever you're doing. And I'll see you soon with episode 40 and our 10 episode test. Thank you very much. Bye bye.